Hello floss tube friends, it's Megan Stitching Moon here with floss tube number 50. And it's been some time, about a month, and I don't quite feel ready to be filming this right now, but in the little time that I had, I have to just try. I don't even know if I'll get through the whole thing before the baby wakes up. He's been not sleeping so great during the day anymore, so we'll see. But I haven't even had my coffee yet. I'm exhausted, but we're just gonna do this and see how it goes. I really hope that's not too distracting. There's like, our neighbor is doing yard work. Oh my God. He's cutting like giant logs, like trees. He's been doing it for days and it woke up the baby. He can't sleep on this porch right behind me. He's been like sleeping really well in his stroller out there. I might even have to refilm this, I don't know. It's distracting me, I hope it's not distracting you. But anyway, I'm sorry. Um, also, I know I wanna do something about the lighting here because I feel like here is light and down, but my face is dark, but today is not that day. <laughs> so as long as you can see my projects, right? We'll make that work. Oh, bear with me today. <laughs> Uh, I, it's been about a month, so I do have some stuff to show you. I've got whips. I have um, plans and exciting plans at the end that I want to talk about. And I have a new pattern in my shop, so I'll show you that. But first, I'll go through my whips and see where we get. Um, by the way, this mug is amazing. It's you like charge it and it can like you push buttons to what temperature you want it and it's like once it's charged it'll like warm it up to that temperature because i am the slowest coffee drinker plus with a baby i always have cold coffee this has like a four hour charge and i still don't get to drink it sometimes before it runs out but <laughs> i need it now so anyway i'm gonna start with my challenge i mentioned last time Okay, I just moved around my tables and now I can't find where I put them. <laughs> okay, sorry. Ugh. All right, yes, it's in this bag. This is my one strand a day challenge where um, I am just literally doing one strand a day on it for a year or until when it gets done. And it's called The Three Billy Goats Gruff by the Prairie Schooler. And I'm doing it for my daughter because she loves the story of the three billy goats gruff and so far it's almost been five weeks now that I've put in one strand a day and on Saturdays is when I like count the end of the week so today is what Friday okay so today and tomorrow I have to do and then it'll be five weeks so I'll, yeah I guess I can it's cutting off a little bit so I'll just take off uh, the hoop and here is where I am. So I, I think, yeah, last time I showed you, I don't think I'd started yet. So I had had, um, what I had done was the three and this billy goat minus the horns. So, um, I did all of that in just one strand a day for five weeks. And I'm doing this on what's called for, which is 32 count lamb's wool. And yeah, it's fun just doing one little strand. And I picked this project, one, because I do want to get it done for my daughter, but also it's not the most fun to work on because of, I don't know, just the colors and it's a lot of the goats over and over that can be heavy stitching. So I'm just, yeah, one strand is great. I look forward to doing it and it gets you somewhere. Sorry, I need to like pause this video for a second because there's weird lines showing up on my camera and I just don't want, I don't know if it's doing anything weird, so I just have to check. <laughs> okay, I'm back, it's fine. It's just my head not noticing things that are usually probably always there in my videos. <laughs> anyway, that was the three billy goats and I post my progress on Instagram every Saturday and I'm using the hashtag one strand a day Yeah, not sell just hashtag the number one strand a day 
And I know some of you said you would like to start that as like that kind of challenge as well. Um, but I'm following that hashtag, so it would be awesome if you use that if you're on Instagram because then I don't know, it's cool we can just follow how far one strand a day takes us. Okay, next I so in my plans, if you saw my last video, I mentioned that I am doing I'm kind of having two projects besides that one um, on the go at the same time because of now I have a stitching room so I can do one like my bigger projects up there like full coverages or even dimensions kits and I can do my um, kind of not easier necessarily but like smaller projects that are not full coverage down in my living room watching TV so um, I'm my plan is to do have like a living room project the same one for about a month um and then spin a wheel and pick the next one and just do that so then i get some good progress on it and i'm not always having to change out the projects just with everything going on and what i decided on for my stitching room i also have a wheel and i'm going to um spin that and whenever it lands on i do a thousand stitches in that before i move on to the next one because I don't always have time to go up there. I usually only go up there when my husband's working at night, like later, otherwise we're just down here together. So yeah, so I don't get as up there as much, um, although recently I have, which is nice. So anyway, about a thousand stitches is what I'm planning on for those before I change out my sewing room project, stitching room. So what I did for my living room project last time I showed you was, um, the Dark Goddess Stitch Along. Now I had, I did find a full picture of this that I posted on Instagram, but I don't have it with me because, well, if you don't know, we just moved to a new house and my wireless printer is not yet hooked up to the wireless. So I'm not able to print anything yet, <laughs> but um, it is completed. It was a stitch along last year and it's by Witches Garden Crafts. And this is where I am. So I actually completed one of the goddesses, Persephone. And it's on 14 count Ada, an opalescent Ada from Stitchy Ferret that was made specifically for this um, design. But yeah, so uh, once I did the back stitch, I think it came out a lot better. You can kind of see what's going on. Persephone is the Greek goddess. I don't know if you know the story. And I was gonna like look up more of it before I filmed. But that didn't happen <laughs> but I think from what I remember she was married to the lord of the underworld and but she got to come up her mother missed her and she got to come up every spring like once a year in the summer or spring so she's kind of like living in two worlds part in the lovely spring above ground and partly in the underworld where there's a little skeletons and things are dead instead of living <laughs> And that is Persephone. I'm not sure which is holding them. I don't know. If you know, let me know. And the next one is going to be Sekhmet, which I believe is an Egyptian goddess, but I have to check on that. So, yeah. I mean, a month. I started it on... Actually, I have numbers for you. Wow. I started it on... March 7th and it was at 821 stitches and I ended it on March 31st. Again, I was going to write this number down before I filmed, but I have a feeling the little one is not going to sleep for too long today. So I got to just start wherever I am and can't worry about all the details too much. So bear with me. Um, Dark goddess. Here it is. I ended at 1,705 stitches. So almost 1,000 stitches I got on, I got in it, not in counting the back, back stitch. So back stitch is more. Now I didn't know the percentage I was on when I started because I hadn't yet loaded all of the full pattern into Pattern Keeper, but now I did. So I'm at 12.48% now, but again, that doesn't include back stitch. So yes. That is that one. And then I got to spin the wheel. That's so exciting at the end of the month. I got to spin the wheel to see my next project. 
for the month of April. But then I was kind of like, eh. <laughs> I didn't really like what it went on. Um, but I do want to work on it still. Oh, look, I'm forgetting to put patterns away already. Okay. It landed on one of my my own little things, not in my shop, my own little designs just for myself. Um, little thing that was kind of quirky, but I wanted to chart the subway system of Boston because I lived there for a year doing my internship at the hospital and I was on that a lot <laughs> and I didn't have a car there. So I decided to chart it because I just, I don't know. The T, it's called the T, the subway system, just has these memories for me. So these words are all gonna be backstitched. You can't actually read them, they're just blobs in this picture. Um, but I'm going to backstitch them and only do the ones that have meaning for me, but I think, yeah, that's all of them that I put on here. I'm gonna stitch all of those words. <laughs> but I was kind of like, eh, when it came up because I mean, it's boring stitching. But it's also, it was good, it's good for when I'm really tired because I don't have to think about it and it actually worked. I've been stitching on it. Well, I actually only started yesterday, which was April, what, 4th? And I got a good bit done yesterday. Um, so let's see. Here we are. Just the red line, I'm not quite done the red line yet. Almost though. I just have to do a little bit down here and then I'll be done that. Just like about a hundred stitches left in the red. And then I also had worked on the, it's the orange line even though the color is yellow, but that's just how they have it in their sign. It's more yellow. Um, but yeah, I think it's 36-ish percent. And then again, that doesn't include the back stitch of the words, but I'm doing this on some leftover fabric I had that was 22 count, um, is it hard anger? And just one over one full cross. And I'm gonna do the little dots or the stops. I'll do those in white at the end. Again, I'm sorry for the lighting here. I'm gonna have to figure something out. You'd think all the natural light and windows would be fine, but the sun, I don't know, it's just, washing it out the colors a little bit so I I tried bringing over a bigger lamp but that didn't really do anything so I don't know is this lighting okay where I have the nice background behind me or would you rather me just go to like a brighter spot <laughs> with like a wall behind me let me know really I'd like to know your opinions is this good enough or do you want like better lighting but no background <laughs> All right, so that I will work on, but I'm not gonna work on it like every time this month that I'm down here, I don't think, because I do have another project that I need to get working on that I can do in the living room, which I'll show you now, but coffee first. Okay, that is also in this bag behind me. Oh. Sorry for that sound. He's got a big tractor too. I hope it's not gonna be like this all summer. <laughs> I'm doing work. All right. Yeah, so this one is big. It's my blanket. Oh, I got the hoop in it still. I'll just take that off real quick. It's the blanket for my son. The stamped one. Let me show you the picture. Okay, where is the picture? There it is. Okay. It is this one. Tobin Baby, which I was told I think was a design works company. But so cute. And the artist is actually Joan Elliott. finished the border I know it started a little in the middle I 
I'm not gonna be able to show you the whole border in one shot, but let me see what I can do. Okay, here's the top. Look at the bunnies. They're so cute. And then down the side, it's just the little swirlies. And then more bunnies at the bottom, the same thing. Just the same thing and then, but yeah, I wanted to just get the border done first, so that's done and now I'm starting in this ribbon. I filled most of that in, I just, it'll look better when I do the back stitch. But this one, um, I mean, it's not that I don't like working on it itself, but what I don't like about it is that you have to use three strands and because obviously the X's are so big, you go through them so fast. So I feel like I'm constantly stopping and starting my threads and you have to get all the three together and um, it just takes a long time. <laughs> so that's what I don't like about it. But I think once it's all backstitched, it comes out really well. Um, the other thing is like, I did a blanket for my daughter, but on hers, I was able to go within in between the like quilting on the back so you don't see anything on the back, but this one, you can see everything on the back. There's the back, <laughs> but that's all right. I know I could put like a cover over it at the end, but honestly, I'm probably not gonna do that. So it'll just be as is, but yeah, got a lot to go. And my plan for this is to work on it at least one time a week. That is my plan. But because I'm now doing this Boston Tea project and I'm probably gonna get bored of it, I might be doing this more than once a week. But that's okay, because then it'll get done faster. Yes, that would be nice if I could have it done by his first birthday in October. Okay, time to warm, push the button to warm up my coffee. Love that, okay. Now, those were my like living room things. So let's go into some stitchy room things. It's so fun being up there. I like just go up there when the kids are in bed and then my husband's off doing something and I'm just like closing the door, relaxing, putting floss tube on my phone and just, oh, it's so nice. <laughs> All right, so first what came up was Full coverage by Heaven and Earth Designs. Moonlight Magic. And the art is by Selena Fennick. It's almost like the size of a mini. Um, it's 400 by 281. Um, yeah, so it's going pretty quick because so far there's not a lot of confetti at all, but I'm working up in the corner. So usually not much there, but um, let me see. Oh, I do have numbers for this too. I just have to read them. First I'll show it and then I can talk about that. So I'm doing it on my usual 25 count easy guide and two over one 10 stitch. And here it is. I'm doing this much differently than any other way that I stitch. I usually start in the corner and just like do diagonals down. But this one, when I started, I didn't have like any of these colors. So I had a lot of the 939 and 310. So that's where I started and just did that almost the whole tree. But then I got the colors. And so now I'm starting up there again. Yeah, the lighting is not great. So again, let me know if you just want me to do a different area, um, if it's not coming out that great with a boring background, but more light. <laughs> okay, so when I started this, I actually did this really quickly. I got a thousand in really quickly on this one. It was um, two thousand one hundred twenty-nine stitches. And I started working on it March 8th. 
and it was at 1.89%. And I ended it on March 14th, so not long at all to get 1,000 stitches, at 3,134 stitches and 2.79%. Um, so I increased it by almost 1%. Let me see. So I wanted to see how far down in this tree that I was. And if you look, it looks like this little thing sticking out here is this part here. So I'm like almost to the bottom already. I had to look at that a few times to like, really? I'm used to like much more big, much bigger things. But it, if that's the case, it looks like the bottom is like right here maybe, which is a big piece of fabric. But yeah, that's fun. I can't wait to get into the moon up there soon. But from now on, yeah, I'll be working in the diagonals, filling in. But not too big, considering. I always call it... Oh, no, it is not... Okay, it is magic moonlight. I said moonlight magic. It's magic moonlight. Yeah. I always mix up the name of it. Okay, my next one that I rolled was a crowd favorite that I haven't really been working on lately, but it was a focus piece before. Okay, copy. I gotta take it out of my bag from Kaylee, 10 stitch. And I took it out of the Q-snap. And this one is Heaven Earth Designs together. Artwork by Jim Warren. I love the colors in this one. And I'm doing this for my husband and I. And it's fitting now because we're walking towards the big house. <laughs> and let's see. I also got about a thousand stitches a little over on this one. And where was I? So I started it on March 28th and finished it on April 2nd. Again, I had like some really good stitchy nights up there. And there's, so far there's really not a lot of confetti, but I think I am starting to get into more confetti now. Um, but it's on my 25 count. And this was my, f when I was first starting and I was doing one over one full cross. So that's what this one is. Look at it, it looks so good. And it is, let's see, I started at 39,954 stitches and 12.89%. And now I'm at 40,982 stitches and 13.22%. Love, love, love how the bl uh, blending in here. And oh, it's so exciting. I've got new colors that are coming in up here. So I'm getting out of just the blues and blacks and I'm into they're like colorful little trees, some greens and purples. Let me show you in, oh, I just put away the picture, but <laughs> I'll show you like what's coming next in the picture. So I am at like this section where, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like trees. And so that's where I'm at. It was really hard to put away because I just want to see things come in and I was so close. But it'll come up again because I'm going through these pretty quick. Um, and I do want to work on everything. So yeah, next time I start that, it'll be fun. But it'll be like slower going because um, there is starting to get confetti and ninja stitches now. Oh, but yeah, it's lovely. I had debated doing this one, I remember, half cross, but then I decided full cross um, because it's a piece for my husband and I, and it's like, you know, a marriage relationship, and I was like, well, you shouldn't do shortcuts and, <laughs> and that. We gotta, like, take it all on, right? So the full cross it is, which I enjoyed doing that one over one again. It was actually pretty enjoyable. Oh, it looks so good. So that one a biggie but I'm so excited for that oh, love it should be a focus again at one point um, 
Oh, I also wanted to show you the colors, just like the threads on this. I got this as a kit or a material pack from Heaven and Earth Designs. And I love their how they do their material packs. I was really happy with it. But look, look at all these bright brown colors. Even though I'm mostly doing blues and blacks now, I've got like so many pretty colors to go. So I finished that one quite like only a few days ago and then I spun the wheel again and it's kind of funny what came up because we're getting into spring and for some reason I had a feeling this one might come up of course the winter's over oh no he might be waking up um but it's a kiss for snowman dimensions gold petite but it's funny because the day I started this it actually snowed it was beautiful and the sun was shining, all the snow was gone. And the day I started this, it snowed, <laughs> but luckily it didn't stick and it's gone now. But it was kind of fitting. Now with these, since I'm doing a thousand stitches, it's a paper pattern, it's not a pattern keeper, so I can't tell exactly, but they do have the grids, like 10 by 10 grids. So I'm estimating what a thousand stitches will be. And because this is a petite, that'll take me quite far. Um, and there's half crosses, but I'm counting half crosses as like one stitch, a full stitch. So um, here's where I'm at. I love how it's coming out. And what I'm gonna work on now is her hat and head. And I think the thousand should take me like about down here-ish. So I should have her like head filled in. And I just have a little bit of some background to do. But what was really frustrating, it ran out of one of the colors for the background, but I, there's also gonna be some in like her hat area. Um, and it ran out, cause they had to use four strands, half cross, but it's already gone. And I don't have too many more of them, but I do, there was a bunch here and like quite a few in here. So what I ended up doing was blending a couple threads that I think I'll hopefully have enough of. Um, I blended one of these darker ones along with um, two strands of like this lighter one. And I don't know if I can show you really well, but the blend is right there. So, I mean, it's different, but it's, it's, a, I was pretty happy with it, like, effect-wise, but yeah, that's kind of annoying that I had to do that. Hopefully the other ones will be enough of, but yeah, but I'm otherwise happy with it. I haven't done any back stitching or French knots, um, so that will come at the end when I'm all done, everything. But it looks so good even without the back stitch. So that's gonna be super cute. I should actually get some time on that today because uh, my husband's doing a master's degree and has to be in another town, like that's far away once a month. So he'll like, he goes away for, um, on Friday to like Saturday. So then those nights after the kids are in bed, I get time to stitch my stitchy room. Maybe he went back to sleep. I don't hear him anymore. So, let me see, that's that. Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting to put like the cover away. Okay, is that all my projects, my whips? For now, let me see. Yeah, those were what I worked on, which I think is good, it's a month, but considering how busy things are, then I think that is pretty good. I am, well, <laughs> granted, I probably should be working on my business slash course I'm working on some of this time, but sometimes my brain is so fried, I just can't even. But I am still working on creating an online course, so I'm doing that when I can today. It's not one of those days, I'm just, yeah, pretty tired. But um, anyway, 
gives me some more stitching time. Now, before I, oh yeah, first I wanna show you my new pattern that I put up in my Etsy shop. Okay, I, again, wasn't able to print it out because my printer isn't yet hooked up so I can show you on my computer. It's a very long, thin project so it's hard to show like up close but it's by the same artist that I've been charting already um Giuseppe McConey who sorry for the reflection but he's an artist a local artist here in my town I'm in Norway but he is actually a Italian from Italy but he lives here and I hope you can see it okay now this I charted because it was a request from Elle, the Keystone Stitcher on Floss Tube. I'll link her below um, because she started it. Um, but she, a while back, requested this one because she saw it on his um, social media and just fell in love with it. And at first I couldn't do it right away because of everything going on. But his, um, his artwork is not that difficult to chart. So... Um, it comes out really nice like automatically um, and then I just have to go through each color but there's not too many colors there's 68 colors and it's 190 by 558 stitches so it's long and narrow <laughs> but not overall it's like only hundred and maybe 17,000 stitches so it's not huge for full coverage and yeah she got it and is plan I think she yeah she already started it she said um after her last floss tube so that'll be exciting and she's also working on another one by him stone expression and she's pretty far along on that so what's also really nice about this is this is um the artist Giuseppe I let her I let him know like what she's doing in the updates and he follows along her channel and sees it like his art coming to life and is so thrilled about that so that's really fun um oh and also the name i let her name it um i'll name it because she's the one who um requested it and she was drawn to it so i let her name it and it's because giuseppe doesn't name his pieces and said we can name them whatever we want <laughs> so this one she called life support and she explained in her um floss tube why um about her son um i'm not son grandson <laughs> um in her garden and I'll let her, you go to her to explain it. But she also went through like a showcase of his pieces that I have on my shop and just described like kind of what she saw in each of them, which was really cool and interesting to see her interpretations and what she thought of when she sees the, the pieces. Um, and it's so funny, like with art, that's the cool thing, right? You can have a hundred different people looking at the same thing and you have a hundred different interpretations of what you see in it. Um, because, you know, she saw something, um, that she talks about in her video and I saw something completely different, especially when she said life support, what I saw or thought of was, I kind of see that bottom as like an earth or a globe for some reason, even though it's, it's not like the earth, but I just, I just get the feeling of like the earth and then the roots around it, kind of holding it up, giving our earth life <laughs> support because we need a lot of that right now. Um, and then, I don't know, just someone carrying up the earth is what I saw. Um, but that's, yeah, it's cool. And I think also what we see in art is like a reflection of ourselves in some way and what our experiences have been and what we're going through and just a reflection of our subconscious and everything. So, so cool, right? That's why we like our artwork. <laughs> But anyway, that is up in the shop now, so you can go ahead and check it out. My link is in below <laughs> the notes. I couldn't think of it. All right, moving on, put this away. Before I go into my plans, I want to just show you a cute little thing. Um, so our, our town, it's very, very small. I think there's like, 800 people but it's known as like a touristy town and also an art village an art town um back in the day like in early 1900s it was where the artists would come to do their thing and actually the mountain behind me if i'll show you that that one you can't see all of it but 
it's very mountainy. Like if I, if a little kid draws a picture of a mountain, like it would be that. And it's one of the most painted um, mountains in Norway. I'm not sure in Europe, maybe, but I just know there's a fact that it's the most painted scene in either Norway or Europe, but I'm not sure which one. Uh, but I've always loved that mountain. It's just something so like majestic and inspiring about it. Anyway, I get off topic, <laughs> but um, now they're starting, they want to revive kind of that art atmosphere in our town. So um, one of the like companies doing that hosted an event, just like a small little get together of stitching postcards. <laughs> and of course I had to go to that. And it was just like this little, like we met at one of the cafes and just like a group of ladies, we got postcards. Um, to like kind of make carve out your holes to stitch in like however you want it and stitch it now mine is nothing special i'll warn you because i brought my baby had to sit on my lap as i did this and then he got fussy so i couldn't do anything more but i chose this um postcard of a scene in like a bar or a cafe back in the day and then i just picked okay let's make something on the windows and I don't know what I was doing over here. It looks like some alien symbol. <laughs> I was like trying to be fancy and I'm like, oh. And this was like a lazy daisy. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, let's just stick with X's. Yeah, and I planned to do like, I don't know, some something color over here, but then Lucas was not having it. So we had to leave and it's not straight at all because he was sitting on my lap. And how we did the holes was there was like a nail, a big, no, not a nail a needle, a big thick needle, and we had rocks and something soft kind of behind this so we could like pound the needle with the rock and make holes. <laughs> so that was interesting. And then he's a, this is a full strand of uh, DMC to just kind of use, but yeah, nothing special, <laughs> nothing that would make, yeah, the art world, but it was just like a fun, I was like surprised they had something like that here. So. Um, hopefully they'll have some more things like that. Uh, and what was I going to say? Oh yeah. Really the one running it, they're into weaving. They want to do more with weaving, which I know really nothing about, but the needle arts, the thread arts, I'm all for it. Okay. Now, now let's talk plans. I know I told you my like current plans and that's not going to change anytime soon, but I have some long-term plans, like really long-term plans, because I am already starting to prepare for my 40th birthday cross-stitch-wise, <laughs> because I just need something to be like epic. And that's, I'm 38 now, so it's a ways away. However, next year I turn 40 in 2025, because it's at the end of the year. So this year in November 39, and then next year I'm gonna be 40 <laughs> so really weird to say but I'm like well it's gonna be something big with cross stitch because it's just been you know I haven't really had a chance to start things and focus on cross stitch lately and I probably won't like I'm gonna be starting work again I'm still on leave but I'll be starting work again in May and then I'll be having that and then in the fall, if I get in, I'll be actually doing school part-time because I have to do more education to actually get like a decent job here in Norway. So I'll be doing that, having the kids and work and school. And I'm gonna start, be still starting up the online business that I wanna do. It's just, yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> but, and my husband's doing his master's Needless to say, I'm gonna need some fun, stitchy stuff in my life. Even though when I turn 40, I'm still gonna have a five-year-old and a two-year-old and still all the same stuff, but we're gonna make it work. I'll be into my routine by then. Hopefully have more of a schedule, I don't know. I don't know, but it's gonna happen. <laughs> we're gonna do something. And I was planning like, what's that gonna be? Uh, hold on. 
And I think I'm gonna do 40 starts in my 40th year, starting when I turn 40 all the way until the next year turning 41. And you know me, I don't do little projects or very rarely, so it's gonna be crazy. <laughs> it's gonna be mostly big starts. And I started writing down just some ideas because I think I just wanna start all the things that I love and would love to start some point in my lifetime, so why not start them now? They're gonna be things like patterns um, or kits that I already have, but I'm gonna have to buy fabric and floss for, you know, most of them except for the kits so I, there will be buying but I'm gonna start like now acquiring things so that you know on Black Friday is my birthday or Christmas gifts I can get stuff towards that <laughs> so it's not gonna be like a big expense all at once um so I am yeah just kind of went through all my things and decided like okay what is my priority what do I really want to work on and I came up with 13 full coverages, eight digital patterns that are not full coverage, seven paper patterns that are not full coverage, and 12 kits, like large ones. <laughs> um, so I feel like that whole year I will just be starting things and that is all. <laughs> I don't know. It's a long ways away. So I'm gonna refine my plans as I go along and let you know. I think at some point I'm gonna do a video once I kind of narrow down like what I wanna start. I'll do like a parade of all the things that I wanna start. And yeah, it's gonna be epic. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm gonna be able to start all these things, but I'm gonna do it. Somehow we'll make it work. But until then, I need to focus on what I have and hopefully get some finishes so that I can add another 40 giant whips to my list. But I'm hoping like my focus now, like focusing for at least a thousand stitches or like a month on a project will get me, and then my one strand a day will get me some good progress on what I already have so I can feel better about starting all those things. <laughs> but I have them, so why not? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I hope this was okay. Oh, another plan. I do have one start coming up, a big start coming up I wanna do for Mother's Day. I actually already ordered the fabric. I might as well just show you that now so you can get excited about one new thing that I'm really, I've been eyeing this one for a long time and wanting to do it for a long time. And I thought, since I'm really not gonna have any more starts besides this until my 40th, Let's do it. Let's do it while you know, my son is still a little baby because it's a mothery thing and it's gorgeous. And let me show you in Pattern Keeper because I forgot to pull out the actual pattern. But okay, let me see. View PDF. It's a Heaven and Earth design um, by Sue Klein. I love her stuff. And actually, I'm going to be starting quite a few of her things on my 40th. Let me see if I can get it bigger. Yes. Okay. And it's big. Oh, okay. Let me just put it in the middle. Hopefully, you can see this okay. Oh, it's a little dark. But, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. That's, oh, yeah, that is not the best image. So, I'll just kind of go close and work my way up. But I think she is gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that. I just love the colors, like how all of this like stuff, like the universe is contained within her body. And she's got her little baby. I know he's kind of an odd looking baby, but in a way he reminds me of my son. <laughs> and, but um, also he or she has like pink crown, so it could be boy or, or girl. I feel like the face is boyish, but then has the like girly crown and I have a girl and a boy, so it works. But oh, look at that, it's so gorgeous. Now, because this is gigantic, 500 by 771 stitches, I am not doing the background, all of that in the background is gonna be the fabric because I am not stitching that. And what I did was I went into 
pattern keeper. Let me just go back and find the actual pattern because I'm already 30% done on this project. View and nope, not that, sorry. Open chart. Okay. <laughs> I went through and like completed all the background in Pattern Keeper that I am not going to stitch. So it oh again, I'm sorry. Okay, maybe I'm I'm gonna make this brighter. Bear with me for a second, because then you can hopefully see it. I should just be able to go in settings and display brightness level. Okay, all the way bright. Hopefully you can see this better. Not really. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh my God. I was looking at the black part <laughs> thinking that was it. Oh my brain, you guys. So obviously you can see the outline of her and all that stitched is done because I'm just, I ordered a fabric. It's not quite as yellowy, but it's a hand dyed, um, 28 count Lugana and it's like a brownish model. So it'll work just a little bit different color. Um, so it doesn't look like it's huge amount of stitching, but do you want to know how much that is? 115,714 stitches completed because I'm not stitching that. And that's 30.02% of this project is just background. So I am quite a ways on this. That's my farthest along on any of my full coverages. So there you go. Oh, and I'm going to start her on Mother's Day, U.S. Mother's Day in May. Oh, I don't even know if I have the threads to start her, but I'm just going to do what I have starting in her horn thing or the butterflies. Ah, I'm so excited. It's so pretty. Um, and I'll be doing 10 stitch on this one. Yeah, so I can hope. Yeah, I should be able to show you the fabric next next floss tube and what's today i hope i'll do another one before mother's day yeah we'll say i should but i think that's it and oh thank you lucas for staying asleep so i could film i have i did this instead of eat breakfast <laughs> but anyway yeah I will hopefully see you soon. Let me know again about like the background if you want me to stay here so you can see something pretty or if I should just be in a room with like better, like actually it will probably won't be natural lighting. I don't know. Just like a lamp. So anyway, oh, I just built the camera. Okay, that's time to go. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.